والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. Welcome everyone to our uh, honoring Almarhum Professor Emeritus Datu Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, the second rector of IIUM. Honorable Dato Dr. Muhammad Dawood Bakar, President of the International Islamic University in Malaysia. Honorable Professor Emeritus Stansri Dato Zulkifli Abdul Razak, Rector of the International Islamic University in Malaysia. Professor Emeritus Stansri Dr. Muhammad Kamal Hassan, former Rector, third Rector of the International Islamic University in Malaysia. Professor Dato Sri Dr. Sayyid Arabi Aidid, Ben Sayyid Abdullah Aidid, former rector of IIUM, fourth rector of IIUM. Professor Dato Sri Dr. Zaliha Kamaruddin, former rector of IIUM, fifth rector of IIUM. Professor Dr. Akmal Kuzairi Abdul Rahman, director of Centris, honorable guests, participant. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. A very good evening. Uh, we begin our session today with the reading of Surah Al Fatiha on the soul of our Almarhum Professor Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Rahman. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد إياك نستعين وحدنا الصراط المستقيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل نفس ذائقة الموت every soul must taste death وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون and give good tidings to the patient who, when calamity befalls them, say, we belong to God, and to him we shall return. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyatuha al-nafsu al-mutma'inna turji'i ila rabbiki raadiyatan mardiyah, fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati. O oh, reassured soul, return to your Lord, well pleased and pleasing to him, and enter among my righteous servants and enter my paradise. With the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are able together today to honor our beloved Professor Emeritus Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, who passed away on Wednesday, 18th August 2021. We are indeed saddened with the demise of our beloved professor, scholar, mujahid, murabbi, leader, father, and mentor. We are indeed honored to take part in this remembrance and honoring session, as it is a very special moment in many ways. It is special because we are gathered to remember and honor a special man, phenomenal person who combines in himself the virtue of a scholar and intellectual leader with high sense of mission and responsibility towards the ummah and the world at large. His thoughts, ideas, character, and deeds are all but a testimony of this. It is special because our university, IIUM, continues its tradition of appreciating its leaders and minds who are part and parcel of its institutional memory and history. And Professor Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman is indeed one of the pillars and contributors to the great journey and fabric of IIUM. It is special because we have with us today our beloved president, Dr. Dawood Bakar, who himself a pillar in, the, in this tall building of IIUM. Uh, 
And who knows, Professor Abdul Hamid, in the deep sense of the word, we have with us the fourth great, the four great rectors of IIUM who are gathered together today to say and express their words of wisdom about Almarhum, Professor Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman, uh, Professor Kamal Hassan, the third director, Professor Datusri Arabi Idi, the fourth director, and Professor uh, Zaliha Kamaruddin, the fifth director, and Professor Emeritus Tansri uh, Zulkifli Abdul Razak, the current director of the International Islamic University, Malaysia. All our four speakers tonight are the intellectuals and leaders of the Ummah and IIUM. All of them cherish and commonly advance the cause of its vision and mission, each one of them in his own merit and unique contributions. Dear all, I was astonished, astonished in the last three days following the condolences in many groups coming from all corners of the world from great people and dignitaries, from young and old people, from academicians, administrators, and ordinary people, from those who worked with him, friends, colleagues, students, and those who know him. Indeed, there is a wealth of information about the various aspects of the contribution of Almarhum Professor Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. On this note, I am very much honored to introduce to you our first speaker tonight, Honorable Dr. Dr. Muhammad Dawood Bakr, President of IIUM. He has been appointed as the eighth President of the International Islamic University Malaysia, effective from 1st July uh, until 30th June 2022. He is also founder and executive chairman of Amani Group. He also serves as the chairman of the Sharia Advisory Council of the Astana International Financial Center, Kazakhstan, and at the Central Bank of Malaysia, the Securities Commissions of Malaysia, the Labuan Financial Services Authority, the first Abu Dhabi Bank, and Permodalan National Berhad. Professor Dawood, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala khayri khalqihi. Wa sayyidil mursaleen wa imamil mutaqeen. Sayyidina Muhammadin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Salatan wa salaman alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi al-tahirin al-tayyibin amma ba'd. Professor Dr. Abdul Aziz Barghouz, the moderator for this evening session. Honorable uh, Professor Emeritus Tansri Zulkifli Razak, the Rector of IIUM. Uh, Professor, Honorable Professor Emeritus Tansri Dr. Muhammad Kamal Hassan, uh, the former Rector and the third, and the third Rector of IIUM. Professor Dr. Sri Dr. Said Arabi Aidit, the fourth rector of IAUM. Last but not least, Professor Dr. Uh, Sri Dr. Zahra Kamruddin, the fifth rector of IAUM. My beloved colleagues and participants, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I have all the pleasure to put on record my appreciation and gratitude to the organizing committee, first for organizing this uh, event this evening, second for inviting me to say a few words in honoring uh, this iconic figure who has served the religion of Islam all the way in his entire life. This great moment that we are having tonight is to acknowledge the many aspects of the contribution of Almarhum, our father, particularly to me, Professor Emeritus, 
Dr. Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, the second rector of IAUM. We have heard that he was not feeling well in the last few months, and we were praying for his recovery. As for any other soul living on this planet, death is something which has been written already in the divine destination of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kullu nafsin za'iqatul maut. Every soul would taste or must taste the feeling and the, and the pressure of, of, of death. Ya ayyuhatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irja'i ila rabbika irja'i ila rabbiki radiyata mardiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the soul of al-marhum Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman will be granted the highest level of acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his blessing to be rewarded the highest place in the Jannah, Jannatul Firdaus. I have been asked by the organizers to say a few words and I will not be long in my speech as I consider myself as the least qualified person to talk about this fuzzy figure to me because I didn't spend uh, much time with him, even though I have had some uh, working relationship with him, some intellectual discussion and some, uh, you know, uh, working together on many aspects. I was still a young lecturer. The frequency that I had during that time was not high enough to connect to his high frequency of uh, Al-Marhum Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. I was aware fully that he has a very high frequency of thinking process, the mindset in particular, the quality of argument and the quality of coherency and logical argument embedded with the sociological and anthropological argument in everything he would say in his argument. But as a young scholar, then I was observing him from distance. I was a bit nervous uh, whenever I got the opportunity to speak to him or with him because he was really a leader in that sense. He commands everything and he listened quite attentively. And that make us nervous because he listened attentively to whatever we are or we were going to say. In this evening session, in remembering and honoring uh, this uh, great father of ours, great mentor of ours, I have two parts of my presentation. And before that, I would like to describe him as someone who is you know, of rare uh, attribute. He is a scholar and he is a thinker. Um, it's quite rare to find these two characters and attribute in one personality. We might have a good scholar, but he or she might not be a good thinker or the other way around. He might be a good thinker, good philosopher, having no solid you know, uh, foundation in knowledge and in the, in the foundation of, of uh, deep and understanding of the basic and the uh, required knowledge of Islam and related knowledge that can support the building of the knowledge before uh, you can become a thinker. But Almarhum, Alhamdulillah, I was uh, uh, noticing that he was combining these two attributes all the way. The first part of my speech tonight or this evening, I would like to uh, share uh, basically who was he in the context of IUM. 
first and foremost, or first thing first, I would consider him as the master architect of IUM in both the hardware and the software of the university. He has uh, actually put his hand on the ground. He made his hand dirty uh, with all the development and the thinking process to develop a new campus, uh, which is the Gombak campus. And I was so lucky, or I have both the pleasure and pressure working with him as, uh, as the young deputy dean of the Kulia of Laws, uh, the two Kulia uh, of the whole entire mothership of the university. Uh, we needed to move a bit early in 1996 together with Kulia of Economics and, uh, and Management Sciences uh, then. So uh, I was assigned to be uh, looking into so many uh, uh, infrastructure and logistic management uh, in the in the Gombak campus then because uh, I was helping the dean uh, Professor Tansiama Ibrahim, but given his age and what have you, I was uh, effectively given the responsibility to look into all aspects of of development and the landscape and logistic and uh, both the seen and unseen kind of management in the new campus. And I, need, I needed to deal with uh, uh, Almarhum. Um, more often than not, he uh, uh, was coming or he came to, the, to Gomba every uh, once in the week or two times in the week. And we uh, had, uh, or we sat down with him to go through all the detail uh, of, of the progress of the, of the development, all the challenges and problems. And he was also in the Senate uh, of the university, was very much active in sharing his own thinking process to develop a few new course outline to align the university to the very uh, essence and uh, objective of the establishment of the university. So he was active on the both sides of the university, I would say on the hardware and the software of the university. The second element, which is very, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, clear from a distance, is his understanding and his passion about internalization uh, to make this university really an international uh, university. And this is quite rare during that time in the case of the other public universities in Malaysia, the landscape, was still very much domestic uh, and perhaps nationalistic in, in approach, but uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Al Mahum was ahead of everyone else to uh, put forward or to put forth and to champion the agenda of internalization in uh, many possible dimension and vertical. Hopefully, uh, to be frank he might have achieved some of the desired targets or he might not achieve some of the desired target, but it's not something we have to uh, put any remark, but he started and someone who to, to champion the beginning of anything is someone to be praised, is something which is praiseworthy because the ideation to make this university really an international uh, university is something that we should put the credit to him all the way. The third element or the third vertical or the third uh, observation I've had about him or on him is about the Islamization agenda of knowledge and uh, courses development and uh, so on and so forth. He was uh, very much clear what uh, we wanted to achieve. At the same time, he was very much clear of the challenges uh, in terms of talent uh, development, in terms of textbook development, in terms of putting the right uh, environment for each and every student of IUM to go through. Everyone must go through the conduit and the environment of Islamization of knowledge in one way or another, irrespective of his or her uh, core uh, major studies in the university. Again, the Islamization of knowledge, 
is something that he was known for that and he has been accredited so much with this idea of Islamization as far as the setup of this great university is concerned. Of course, there are many other great thinkers, philosophers, and advocates of Islamization of knowledge, but uh, Al-Marhum, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman was able to put it on the ground. And we have seen the fruit of his uh, labor even until today uh, in many of the courses uh, in the university. The fourth element of uh, him from the scholarly perspective, I think, uh, interestingly, uh, from my uh, young age uh, perspective uh, during that time, before he departed the university in 1998, uh, of course, uh, I was still uh, young during that time compared to uh, Professor uh, Dr. Kamal Hassan and uh, Dr. Said Arabi, who were my mentor all the time. So perhaps they have had many uh, high level uh, intellectual discussion more than I have I ever had. But uh, from, the, from the limited interaction with Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman uh, in, the, in managing the university, I can, see, I, can see, I can see that he is very much the custodian of quality control. He follow up things through. He said something, he asked us to do something and he followed up through. And this is a very interesting character of a leader. He didn't preach, he didn't um, uh, advocate, he followed up. And uh, whenever he followed up, he followed up with a high tone of the narration and, 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 and expectation at the same time. Last but not least, under the scholarly dimension of Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, um, his ability to uh, bring the dimension of the sociology and anthropology aspect to uh, human sciences and, and uh, heart sciences at the same time. And uh, this is something that not many scholars are able to do that. Uh, this is the legacy of Ibn Khaldun, the legacy of few great scholars in the past, and perhaps uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman was able to get that close to uh, bring this dimension uh, in whatever he did and whatever he planned to do uh, throughout his entire uh, service as director of the International Islamic University uh, until the last day when he uh, departed the university. Uh, in 1988, also, uh, yeah, during that time. The second element, uh, briefly, Professor Dr. Abdul Aziz, I uh, will stop uh, in the next five minutes or so. Uh, I wanted to look at him from another perspective. Uh, who was he as a person, as, as a colleague, as a co-worker, as, as a father, as a mentor, as, as someone close to us, as friend and co-worker and colleague, working together under the same roof of the university. Briefly, I can say that he is very much passionate. The passion of uh, Almarhum Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman was incomparable, uh, always uh, breaking the record and always uh, up to the mark, above the watermark all the time. And uh, that make everyone of us tired to uh, be even close to his level of being passionate. His level of passion and affection uh, is too much uh, to be desired of. Uh, so for a young scholar like myself, uh, it pushed me to work harder. It pushed me to be a bit focused because for me to match his level of passion in managing the meetings and the Senate meeting, in the management meeting, and even in development meeting, uh, when he came to chair the meeting and you can see in, in his eyes the, 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 the gravity and the intensity of, the, of being a passionate person. Of course, uh, on top of being passionate, uh, which is a good character, he was also uh, known to be a hardworking uh, person. Again, uh, it's not easy to match him. Uh, uh, I mean, I have heard many other deans during my time. I was deputy dean. They were complaining uh, that they were not able to catch his 
his level of, of, of uh, working extra mile or working extra mile all the time, every single day. So he was famous and known to be a hardworking person, uh, not um, wasting any single moment and, and minutes of his uh, you know, uh, uh, office hour uh, from morning all the way to uh, afternoon and sometime up to the evening. The third uh, character of him as a co-worker and colleague, uh, put aside the, you know, the scholarly and the level that he has achieved and he has contributed, uh, he's very much a challenging personality. He likes to challenge people. He likes to challenge, he challenged me a few times and I was uh, you know, taken aback and I was almost sometime wanted to cry. Uh, when, I mean, he was push me and challenge me all the way. And when I was about to go to do, to do my PhD in UK, I said, well, give me three reasons why um, uh, UK universities are better or, or equal with American university. That kind of question, uh, you didn't prepare for any interview, to be honest. Uh, but he, he, he was asking me that tough question. When I was uh, applying for my promotion uh, to become uh, a very young, as I said, professor, uh, after completing three years as the minimum requirement to apply for such promotion. And the first question, uh, uh, right uh, you know, just before 6.30 in the afternoon, just before Margaret time, I was the last in the list. And he was asking me still energetic and still, um, you know, um, uh, motivated to, to, to engage uh, the last candidate of the interview. If we were him, we tend to be a bit, you know, taking, uh, you know, uh, uh, very uh, uh, not active uh, role during that hour. But he did uh, uh, on the contrary. He said to me, uh, why are you interested to apply for this post and promotion? You're still young. Why can't you wait for another one or two years uh, so that it would be fair for you to have more maturity and whatnot? So he was telling me uh, all the time. And uh, I learned a lot about him. I, I was prepared a bit for that question. And I was asking uh, straight to the point that, uh, uh, Rector, uh, I would like to get the recognition and I would like to have some additional income and salary for me. That was my question to him. And he was laughing uh, all the way. And as you know, uh, Dr. Abraham Al-Sulaiman al marhum really smiled that that much, uh, I mean, uh, but he was laughing uh, at my uh, answer. I, I still remember that moment uh, as if I'm a son to the father. The father uh, was trying his level best to uh, test the level of intensity uh, of uh, his children. Of course, on top of challenging personality, he was also unlocking personality. He was trying his best to unlock your, your, your capability and your your act, your, your real uh, quality of a person. And last but not least, he was so firm, and but he was also approachable. So I think I have spoken uh, that much already. I don't want to prolong this speech. I would like to say that uh, I was so uh, fortunate to have known him uh, in my life, in my early part of my career. I have learned a lot. I have absorbed all the good qualities of him as a father, mentor, administrator, manager, scholar, uh, unlocker, uh, you know, he unlocked everything, basically uh, for me, challenge me to do and to walk extra mile. And for this, uh, you know, great moment I have had with him, uh, I, I would take this opportunity to uh, offer uh, my condolences to the beloved uh, to his all family members for the uh, demise fan, for for their loss, a great loss to the whole family. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, place his soul among the righteous uh, in the highest level of Jannah. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless all of us and bless this university, and may Allah give him the three element. Uh, though he has passed away, waludun salihun yadu lahu not only his biological children, but also his student of this university praying for him. Almun yuntafa'am bihi 
the usefulness, uh, the, the, the use the, of the knowledge that he has taught everyone through uh, lecturing and uh, writing and, uh, and uh, you know, all the intellectual discussion that he has contributed, as well as he is known for his generosity, Swadakatun Jariah. May all these three things remain on this planet to, uh, to, to continue forever as he deserves all the elements of these three things. Rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'ah wa ghafra zambahu wa adkhalahu fasiya jannatihi wa rzukhu al-fidawsa al-a'la aqbulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum Allahumma amin Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Thank you Dr. Dr. Dawood for your very very important exposure of uh, Prof. Abdul Hamid, uh, contribution and personality. It was brief, but uh, deep touching on the intellectual side, the thought side, along the way coming down to the real practical things, talking about his way of dealing with uh, people, his way of approaching things, the character of a leader who is down there, down to earth and uh, with a value system in his mind, trying to impart this value. Thank you, Dato, once again. I would like to, uh, before I go to our uh, second uh, speaker, acknowledge the presence of uh, uh, Sister Muna Abu Sulaiman uh, with us here. Uh, welcome, Sister Muna and the family members, and also acknowledge all the brothers and sisters who are also in the uh, official YouTube following us, uh, inshallah. Uh, we go to our um, uh, second speaker, uh, our Honorable Professor Emeritus Tansri, uh, Dr. Zulkifli Abdurazak, the Richter of IUM. Uh, thank you, Prof. Richter, for uh, joining us and uh, sharing inshallah your thoughts and uh, views on this uh, before uh, that i would like to mention to all our uh, viewers uh, across the uh, globe uh, prof uh, uh, tansri is currently our rector uh, he was the vice chancellor of university science uh, malaysia usm from 20 uh, 2000 to 2011 he is also the immediate past president of the international association of universities a unesco affiliated organization based uh, in paris uh, tansri the floor is yours Thank you very much, uh, Professor Aziz. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu shafil anbiya wa salin. Sa'ala wa al-kibis tamain. La hula hula kuwata ala billah. Indeed, uh, President uh, uh, Daud Baka, uh, colleagues, Sister Muna, Abdu, uh, Abu Sulaiman, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, I'm a little nervous tonight to speak about a person that is very much a figure by itself. I have not met him. Uh, I was away. I'm in a way an outsider as far as I, I am concerned. But still, his name rings very fresh in our mind when I was a student then, in a uh, staff then in the University of Science Malaysia. I would like to take uh, this opportunity just to express the condolences of the university on behalf of the community on the demise of this great leader of ours. He will, he will be sorely missed, but certainly I think his spirit will live within us for a long time to come. Indeed, when you look at the building itself, I think every part of the building will talk about uh, Professor Abu Sulaiman, the way he has managed the campus and also building it the way it is. I am indeed uh, very fortunate uh, to know that he is the second rector and now working in the building that he has erected for us for a long time to come. I will take a very short, short time because I know there are a lot more speakers who know him well and could share many more substantive things with you. But I indeed will take three things from him. The little that I know and I speak to people around me about uh, Professor Abu Sulaiman. One is his attention to details. This is something that we are trying to emulate in the university, 
given the building, given the structure, given the campus, sprawling as it is, attention to detail is something that it is important. And I was told at times they make comments on certain part of the buildings that ought not to be that way because the, te the details had been missing. Secondly, I think he's a person who walked the talk. I think Professor, uh, Dr. Uh, Daoud has mentioned this. He followed through whatever he has done and he actually do not say much, but do things the way he has spoken about it. And then we need to emulate the walking the talk. It's as important as it is as far as running university. Last but not least, which I also learned, that he's very passionate about the community, not only in the university, but also around the university, indeed around the world. The book that he wrote, The Crisis of the Muslim Minds, indicate that he's very, very much concerned about what is going on, not only within ourselves, but also around us, and try to provide solution on this. These are the three, I think, very important lessons for me as I go on to hit the university uh, this is the three lessons that reminds me of, of what we need to do to make this university great, learning from the legacy of the second rector, who apparently is the longest serving rector, as far as I can tell, for 10 years, 1988 to 1998. I would like to stop there. I would like to leave uh, the rest for the, the, for the rest to, to, to share and for me to learn from them. But I've got two announcements to make. One is I was toying with the idea of how do we leave this legacy of this fabulous person in the university in a very concrete way. And I was thinking of naming one building after him. But last night, fortunately, there was an email from no less than the third rector, Professor Kamal Hassan, suggesting exactly the same thing. And in fact, suggesting that we should name the Kulia of IRKHS after the name of Almarhum. I have I agreed on this. We will bring this to the UMC meeting uh, next week and we will concur on this and we'll officially name the Kulia after the beloved uh, rector uh, for a small token for a colossal work that is done so that we will remember him so that the generations to come will remember that this person has contributed so much as far as university and Islamic education is concerned. The second one, I am also very humble uh, to be asked by Her Majesty, the Queen, who is the, also the constitutional head of the university, to express her deepest condolences to the family that she has gone, although she also have not met her, but have known her from the kind of history that the father-in-law, who is the former, uh, the first uh, constitutional head, uh, told her about what this rector is all about. So on these two announcements, I hope we will do justice to what she has done to us and given all that she has done. And we hope this will live on as a spirit, as an inspiration for us to take the university further beyond as far as I can imagine. On that note, thank you very much. I do apologize for whatever we have done wrong to him and hopefully we will be for, forgiven for that. Wabillahi taufiq wa hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tansri. Uh, may Allah bless you. I think uh, uh, this gesture of naming the kulia of Yarki HS on uh, giving the name of Dr. Abdul Hamid, I think this is something great. And may Allah bless you and Prof. Kamal and all the management of the university. I think uh, uh, I, I don't know how to uh, express it, but uh, it, it's really great. Um, and I think uh, if I look at uh, your summary, Tansri, of uh, the few things about Prof. Abdul Hamid, in fact, there is some similarities between you and him. Uh, when, when it comes to the practical and the uh, uh, walking the talk, and uh, when we see uh, your videos, uh, in the uh, in our website there, uh, I always remember Dr. Abdul Hamid. So uh, may Allah bless you all for all these kind things. Uh, I think Dr. Sister Mona today will be very uh, very happy for this. Uh, let's move forward to our uh, uh, next uh, distinguished uh, uh, speaker. Uh,
uh, is Professor Emeritus Tansri Dr. Mohammed Kamal Hassan. I think our uh, third director will be the, uh, is like the reservoir of ilm and knowledge and experience and relations with uh, Prof. Uh, Abdul Hamid. I think they were together for a long, long time, I think. Uh, before I uh, give the floor to Prof. Kamal, uh, Prof. Kamal is our third rector from 1998 to 2006. Uh, he started his academic career long time ago at uh, UKM, where he chaired the Department of Usuluddin and Philosophy in 1979, mashallah. Uh, he began his career uh, in uh, IUM here, where he founded the Faculty of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences in 1983. It is uh, indeed uh, a great thing, uh, which become now a great kulia in this university. Uh, currently, Prof. Kamal is the uh, honorary advisor uh, at Centris uh, in IUM here. Prof. Kamal, uh, the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhayy al-lavi la yamut. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah, al-lavi khalaq al-mawta wal-hayata liyabluwakum. Ayyukum ahsanu amala, wa huwa al-aziz al-ghafur. Wa ashadu anna sayyidana muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. البشير النذير والسراج المنير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا. Um, Professor Dr. Abdul Aziz as the moderator. Um, yang berbahagia uh, Dato uh, Dr. Daud Bakar, our uh, president. Uh, yang berbahagia Tan Sri uh, Professor Zul Kifli, our rector, um, um, Professor Said Arabi Idid, uh, the fourth rector, and uh, Professor Zaliha Qamaruddin, the fifth rector. And um, um, I would also like to um, um, greet and welcome Sister Muna. Uh, and other members of the family uh, for participating, uh, and uh, sisters and brothers uh, um, who are uh, participating. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, it is uh, indeed a great um, honor and a privilege uh, for me to have been working with Al Marhum. Uh, since 1989, but I had known him uh, in my uh, MSA days uh, at Columbia University. He was in Pennsylvania, and the first time I met him was in um, MSA uh, East Coast Regional Conference, I think in December 1969, and um, uh, he was a young scholar at that time and uh, did not get his PhD yet, but he was going to deliver a very, a very, um, subs uh, a big paper on, on Islamic economics. And when I heard him for the first time, I thought this was uh, a very um, uh, thought provoking scholar. And, uh, uh, and I thought in my heart, uh, I do not know how he's going to adjust to the traditional ulama in, in Saudi Arabia. I thought he would be rocking the boat uh, with his uh, um, very rationalistic, analytical and questioning uh, mindset. So I was very impressed with him and uh, so met him uh, at other occasions during the MSA annual convention. Uh, in 1969, 70, and so on. And then later on in 1971, the Association of Muslim Social Scientists was established with uh, al marhum Ismail Farooqi as the leader, and also Dr. Hamid and others were also co-founders. And the uh, AMSS used to hold also conferences, which I attended. So, but I never thought uh, at all that uh, I would be working under him later on. So, um, and then when he came in 19, 
89. Uh, I was the first to go and visit him, and 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 we recall the good old time uh, in uh, in uh, in MSA and also in in the USA. Um, let me um, share with you uh, four reasons. Of course, I can give many reasons, but uh, in view of the time, uh, I'm going to just give four reasons why I consider my experience with al Marhoum as a great privilege. Number one, he translated my dreams and the dreams of many young Muslim intelligentsia in Malaysia and overseas of the 80s. In 1979 was the um, advent of the 15th century. So there was a lot of euphoria in the air and we were also looking forward to big things in, in the Muslim world and also in Malaysia. And, and um, uh, it was al marhum who translated our dreams and, and put into reality our expectations with his, uh, you know, um, uh, very practical approach to life. Uh, he laid down the ideological and philosophical foundations of IIUM, uh, namely the following. Number one, the, the imperative of reforming and transforming the mindset and the way of thinking of the Muslim mind. Of course, you can find this, this idea in his very famous book, The Crisis of the Muslim Mind. Um, second, the de-secularization, de-westernization, and Islamicization of human knowledge, that is knowledge constructed uh, empirically and experientially. Um, and um, also the, um, uh, a number two, uh, sorry, okay. Uh, and also Muslim higher education. In fact, um, it's interesting to observe that uh, when he was here for many years, I think in the first uh, seven years, he was basically talking about reforming uh, Muslim um, intellectuals, the intelligentsia, and the kind of Islamic university. But then later on, he began to write about uh, child education and, and preschool education. So he started from the top and then went down. Other people would start from, from, from the bottom and would go up, but he started from the top and then he went down then. And of course he has several books uh, in both areas with the top as well as with the bottom. Um, then um, number three, uh, uh, the reconstruction of an alternative civilization based on the worldview of Tawheed. This also we saw in his, one of the few books, you know, the the worldview of the Quran as a um, springboard for, for civilizational reform or transformation. Uh, he constructed the new university system. In fact, changed the American oriented to, uh, sorry, the British oriented, Commonwealth oriented to an American oriented system with the credit hour system courses and no, uh, no uh, tutorials except for law, I think we insisted on, on that. Uh, so um, uh, the, new, the, the new system was based on the unity of revelation and reason, unity of body, intellect, and soul, and unity of well-being in this world and well-being in the hereafter. And then he built the new uh, academia of IIUM on the unity of what I call the unity of the masjid, the maktaba, that is a library, and the souq, that is the market. Uh, I don't mean that he was going to bring the market in the university, but he was always very concerned about the cafeteria for the students. And he wanted the students to have uh, the best kind of food, but with the lowest uh, prices. And that was always a challenge uh, to many people. But alhamdulillah, until today, uh, our cafeterias and also the um, cafeterias at the Mahallas are still among the cheapest uh, in the area. So, um, so to me, 
he saw the university as a cop, like the old university, the combination the masjid, the souq, and the maktaba, uh, and the bi'ah, and the library, and the environment. So four things, masjid, library, souq, uh, and bi'ah. Of course, um, our present rector is very, very concerned about the bi'ah. Uh, of course, he doesn't use the word uh, bi'ah. Uh, because he is new to Arabic. <laughs> but, but he has done many, many things about the environment that uh, I think the last four rectors uh, could, could not do half of what he has done with the present environment. Alhamdulillah. And number two, uh, um, he exemplified what, uh, what um, Western scholars call servant leadership model. That, and also leading by example. Uh, you can see that he, he never, you know, presented himself as, as, as the boss as such. He would be the one doing the work. And if you do not, uh, you know, care to, to, to do certain things, he'll be the first to do it. And then you'll have to follow him. As, as uh, Dr. Daud said, he did not preach, but he acted. Uh, and deeds speak louder than, than words in his case. So he was a servant leader as far as dedication, commitment, moral integrity, and placing the interests, the vision, mission, and philosophy of IUM above personal interests and above family interests. And that is why the family has always been complaining that he came back late. And at one time, uh, the, 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 the wife, the good wife, also was saying that, uh, he's late because he got married to the university. Uh, on this marriage, I will uh, I have something to say at the end, maybe. Uh, so number three, uh, as a Muslim reformist and uh, intellectual and uh, revivalist thinker, al marhum aim at transforming the negative aspects of the Muslim personality and culture. Although he doesn't he doesn't say these things. But I knew it, and he was very concerned about some of the negative aspects of Malay culture, particularly uh, the girls being very shy to speak in public. Remember at one time in the 70s, girls in the universities don't want to talk in the classroom. They would write uh, their question on pieces of paper and then pass on the uh, pieces of paper uh, to, to, the, to the lecturer in front. Dr. Abdul Hamid knew about the nature of Malay girls and Malay boys. So he brought many changes, including uh, introducing the institution of debating. And, and since, and since um, he introduced the institution of debating, uh, we produce uh, astonishing results. Uh, many Malay girls and Malay boys became among the top uh, debaters in the world and IIUM was one time the number three in the world, one time even uh, number one in the world for English as a second, as a second language. But in, uh, in, in the law moods, uh, we were also, we had, uh, we, we were number one and we beat uh, Harvard. And then our, our Malay girl was the best speaker in the world uh, at the world moods. So he achieved that within just uh, five, six years, he, he transformed. Uh, the Malay uh, shyness uh, and, um, and extreme modesty uh, to become more forward, uh, optimistic, confident, uh, and, and not having any, uh, any uh, element of inferiority complex. He changed all that. So this, this is not much uh, written or spoken about by other people, but since I was very close working under him directly, day and night, uh, I could detect this. And, and as uh, Dr. Daud said, he challenged uh, many people because he wanted the Malays to speak up. And knowing the Malays, if you don't push them, you don't, you, don't, you know, uh, put, they will not speak up. Even if they know, they will just, you know, and, and he, de he did not like that. And I think he, he did the right thing in, in bringing about the changes. And number four, uh, both, both he and I, uh, as I said, were members of the Association of Muslim Social Scientists in USA, which was headed uh, by Al-Marhum Dr. Ismail Al-Farouqi. 
the intellectual movement for Islamization of human knowledge in USA was spearheaded by Triple IT, uh, which was established in 1980. And when Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman became the rector, of course, he was part of Triple IT. He introduced Triple IT intellectual agenda, which was in harmony with the RIUM philosophy and raison d'etre uh, of the university and implemented it by creating the new kulia. Now, alhamdulillah, uh, I would like to congratulate Tansuri Zul for agreeing to name the kulia after, after Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. So we will call him Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. And in short, A-H-A-S Kulia, like I call for Ahmad Ibrahim. This one is A-H-A-S Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. And so we want the whole world to know that we uh, would like uh, to immortalize his name with the kulia that he established, uh, I would say, by his own hands, uh, with the own ten fingers. Uh, the others were already there in, in the in the planning. Uh, we had uh, in the planning, we had engineering, we had medicine, we had even agriculture. We had, of course, uh, education, architecture, and blah blah blah. But we never had in the original plan uh, the idea of having a combination of social sciences, humanities, and Islamic studies all in one. And, and, and it was a great experiment. I had my doubts. I was very, very re reluctant, but he did it. And Alhamdulillah, of course, thanks to Triple IT networking around the world. Then um, the ideal of um, Islamicization uh, uh, of empirically acquired knowledge meant actually for us prioritization of divine revelation, wahi, um, and, and, um, and, and reason. And in fact, unif reunifying uh, reason and revelation and not separating it as in secular universities or, um, or completely ignoring revelation as in the uh, atheistic ag agnostic cultures. But in those days, there were very few social scientists uh, and, and, um, and people in, in humanities and natural scientists who were available to work in IAUM because our pay was very small. But Dr. Abdul Hamid managed to bring, and one time, one of the best scholars around the world because our, our system was quite good. But later on, when the economic crisis came, many people migrated from IAUM. But Alhamdulillah, uh, now, of course, it is uh, the big burden of uh, Tansri Zul uh, to make uh, the best out of very, very difficult uh, financial circumstances. Um, okay, so Dr. Abdul Hamid did the impossible, uh, and the rest is history. So KIR, KHS, and now uh, AHAS, KIR, KHS was the first, and perhaps still the first faculty in the world which. Uh, integrates three universes of human knowledge under one faculty, social sciences, humanities, uh, and Islamic living knowledge, or in the West, theology. However, in establishing KIR KHS, uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman unknowingly altered or amended the original plan or the curriculum of IAUM in which uh, 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 Professor Arifin Suhaimi and myself worked to produce that original plan where there was no Islamic studies. In our original plan, no Islamic studies uh, because we believe all the other sciences would be, uh, you know, infused with Islamic values and perspectives. So there was no need uh, to, to duplicate uh, or to, to continue the, the bifurcation uh, the, the dualism of the secular and the religious in Islamic university. But uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid changed that, modified that, and so the original plan uh, had to uh, give way uh, to Dr. Abdul Hamid's plan, which has survived until now. Uh, okay, from 1983 um, until 88, for five years, when uh, Dr. Abdul Raouf was a rector, IIUM was in fact based on the original plan or the original model without a faculty of Islamic studies. Now, finally, uh, before I end my, 
my tribute uh, to the great soul and mind of Almarhum, let me highlight five of his personality traits very briefly, uh, because I want to share with the young people uh, who may not know him very well, um, five of his uh, personality traits, or maybe even less, uh, that made him an exceptional leader. And that should be emulated by all leaders in IUM. Um, if, if IUM is to be the leading, uh, leading the way of the Khalifa of Allah uh, on earth. Um, number one, uh, number one on my list is competency, sincerity with high sense of accountability to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, honesty, humility, with the aim of seeking the pleasure of Allah, ibtigha maradatillah, in all his work and activities. Number two, having the mindset and behavior of an ummatic and global Muslim citizen of the world, which uh, uh, transcended all ethnic biases and prejudices and natural boundaries. One thing he said, and which has stuck to my mind every time he said that, you know, he was telling us, I think in the Senate or somewhere, he said, I am a Makkawi, a person born in Mecca. If you are born in Mecca, then you live in environment with a rainbow of colors, black, yellow, brown, red, what have you. So you don't have, you become colorblind. And you cannot be uh, 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 ethnically biased. And Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman al marhum was that kind of person. The ummah was above all in his mind uh, and not the race. So number three, uh, this also has been um, recognized by many people who work closely with him. He was deeply caring. Uh, you, uh, Dr. Daud mentioned he was a father, a very generous father, uh, very compassionate, empathetic person who was proactive in securing scholarships, assistantships, or loans from international sources of funds. For instance, IDB. He was fortunate to have uh, Dr. Muhammad Ali, who was his good friend. And so when he wanted money from uh, IDB, he would just call Dr. Muhammad Ali and Dr. Muhammad Ali will send scholarship money. So he tried to get money from all over the world to help the needy students. And thousands of foreign students, especially those from, uh, from Afghanistan, from, and then later on from, from Bosnia, uh, and uh, also from African countries, from China, uh, Philippines, uh, and so on, uh, were very uh, thankful to him for making uh, it possible for them to study in IIUM. So he was indeed the generous and compassionate father of needy students. And I remember there were times when he would just take the money out of his pocket and give it uh, to, the, to the poor students. Number four, uh, his profound belief, uh, conviction and optimism that the Muslim Ummah has the capacity to bring about civilizational transformation uh, if the Ummah uh, or if the Muslims are educated in the holistic, integrated and balanced way of wasatiyah. Finally, in the, uh, okay, before I come to the final part, what I wanted to say with regard to the um, having a wife, uh, because uh, um, Madam Faipa uh, told uh, our president at that time that um, Abdul Hamid uh, Abu Suleiman uh, was married to the university. Uh, so um, IIUM became his second wife, uh, but the first wife didn't worry didn't bother, was not worried because uh, this is a university, not, not a Malay woman. Uh, but what I would like to say about IIUM is that IIUM is his youngest child. Uh, I hope uh, Sister Muna will agree with that. <laughs> Although you don't have any more young children, young uh, siblings, but IIUM is his youngest child. Um, and, and, and what, what I tried to do and what Datuk Said Arabi tried to do, what, uh, what um, uh, Prof Zaliha tried to do, and now Tan Sri Zul is trying to do, is actually uh, feeding, developing, nourishing the child that he produced. Uh, you know, we're not changing the, 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 the personality of the child. 
but we are uh, investing and building and improving, putting all kinds of knowledge, skills, attitudes, uh, aptitudes, and what have you to prepare for, uh, for the decades ahead. And, and this was the way that Abdul Hamid was thinking. He was ahead of his time, but he never said IIUM was going to be my youngest child. But I would say that I am his youngest child. And of course, his dearest uh, grandchild is uh, reveal, uh, uh, Kulia of Islamic Reveal Knowledge and Human Sciences. And now, finally, in conclusion, I would like to say uh, that I did not intend to speak about his uh, uh, intellectual contribution uh, as a scholar, as a thinker. He has produced many books, subhanAllah, uh, especially in Arabic. And I'm happy to know that um, a group of uh, scholars in America, and I think overseas also, um, uh, I think about 14 of them uh, wrote different aspects of his thoughts, of his intellectual contributions. Unfortunately, they're all in Arabic. And this is um, uh, edited by Dr. Nadia Muhammad Mustafa and, and prefaced by Dr. M uh, Mahmoud uh, Yaqub Mirza uh, and Dr. Nadia also, also benefited a lot from Dr. Abdul Hamid and, and, uh, and they came out with this uh, I would like uh, those who know Arabic to take note of this because this came out in 2021 uh, this year a reading of the thought of outstanding personalities of the Ummah regarding the vision and method of Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. So uh, those of you who like to learn more about, about, the, uh, about his intellectual contributions, uh, you can read this uh, book um, written by, uh, contributed by 14 writers uh, covering all aspects of, of his intellectual work. And I like uh, the word that uh, Prof, uh, Dr. Daoud mentioned earlier about being passionate. Yes, he was indeed um, uh, passionate in his work uh, and because he was really driven uh, by the strong will to see the reconstruction of Muslim civilization and also uh, the reconstruction of world civilization, if not in his time, at least in the time of his youngest child, and, and his also youngest grandchild, uh, the, the Kulia that uh, Tansri is going to rename as uh, Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, Kulia of Islamic Reveal Knowledge and Human Sciences. I will end with this a short dua. Allahumma ghfir lahu wa rahamhu wa afihi wa afu anhu wa ja'al mathwahu al-jannata wa maqamahu al-firdaus wa ja'alhu fi ma'iyyatu al-salihin مع الذين أنعمت عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك الرفيقة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. Thank you, Prof Kamal. ما شاء الله. This is a very uh, great exposure on many aspects of uh, Prof. Abd Hamid contributions and character and work. Uh, may Allah bless you for all this uh, brief but yet very deep uh, kind of uh, uh, exposure. I think our people will uh, learn a lot from this. Uh, I, 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 I wanted to mention here that uh, our Prof. Richter, uh, Prof. Zul, uh, says, uh, why not we work and translate the book? Uh, which is in Arabic and written by these 14 uh, scholars. I know, I, I know about the book and I read, uh, uh, I, I read the book. It's a very good book. Uh, Tansri, inshallah, will take up this and we will do the needful, inshallah. Uh, we move forward to our uh, next uh, speaker, to uh, our uh, professor, uh, Professor Datosri, Dr. Seed Arab Eidid. Uh, our fourth uh, Richter, uh, Prof. Sayyid, was a professor, a professor in the Department of Communication, Kulia of IRKHS. Uh, he was before the Dean of the Research Center in 20, uh, 2001, uh, was later appointed as our Richter from 2006 until 
2011 and he has a lot of uh, things uh, in his CV and his works in all uh, areas. I would like to uh, welcome uh, Prof. Sayed. Uh, go ahead, Prof. Sayed. Thank you very much, uh, Archie Pavod. I'm a, uh, the president of IBM, the Baka, the director, and uh, other colleagues. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm going to look at uh, the contributions of Mr. Emeritus, Dr. Abdul Hamid Sulaiman, in a very Different light, different light. So I will not go into the thoughts and ideas of the person because this has been taken care of by so many other scholars. I will acknowledge that he was the second rector of IOM. And among his biggest achievements uh, was to put in place the physical structure and the curriculum to enable the university to move forward as an international Islamic university. He was dedicated to the idea that I, IUM be truly international, truly Islamic university, offering a platform and orientation of courses that were not available elsewhere. Now, he was a remarkable Murabi, genuinely believing in the mission and vision of the university. He was a forceful character, with some painting him as dictatorial, while others describing him as kind-hearted, but was clear in his direction for the well-being of the university. Now, I must say, I've not met him before the event in Riyadh. I did not know him at all. When I joined IIVM in 2000, I had already left. So my comments today will be divided into three parts. My first part was my first encounter with him in Riyadh, sometime in 2008. Second, my impression of the physical planning and others, of course, limited. And three, my limited comment on the man and his ideas. So let me talk about my first encounter with him in Riyadh. We were in, in Saudi, 10 of us as guests of King Abdullah, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, after we have honored him, compared him with the honorary doctorate. He gave us, uh, asked us to visit Saudi. So we went to, to visit Saudi. In Riyadh, uh, Professor Sanu Kutu, suggested to me then that we visit Hamid Sulaiman to say salam. Now, it was the first time that his name appeared on my mind. I knew he was the second rector, but his presence as a campus figure or history was oblivious until Sanu mentioned his name to me. So I agreed to the suggestion made by Professor Sanu. I met the president, Tan Sri Sanusi Junit was there and told him of our intention to visit Hamid Sulaiman, to which he was not in favor of. He said something to the effect that the government may not be pleased, but said to me, please go on if I wanted to. But if you want to go, please consider that this conversation did not exist. So Sanu and I went by taxi the next day to meet Dr. Hamid Sulaiman. His house was simple, not the lavish bungalow that I had assumed it would be. He welcomed us warmly. Once inside, he pulled Sanu aside and said, who is that gentleman beside you? And Sanu said, that was, or that time, that is the rector. So the first time that we met, he, he met me a second. I met uh, meeting him face to face at that time in 2008. So we sipped coffee. Hamid Sulaiman incessantly was asking what IIM, uh, 
this person okay, but the Kamal is okay, that person okay, this campus okay, uh, are the buildings okay, are the trees growing up, and so, on. so I answered the best that I could. But I could sense that toward the end, he was wiping his eyes. But not sobbing, but happy that everything was doing well. Yeah? He said he had not received any information what I, I am, and I was supposed to be the first nation to have met him. I hope he was wrong. Eh? So the meeting lasted about 30 minutes. Very eventful and meaningful. I could meet my face to face with my predecessor, the second actor. Now, as I walk to the door, and as he walked first to the door to say goodbye, he said to me, he said, I would like to visit IUM and Malaysia again. And spontaneously, I said, most welcome. You are most welcome to visit. Now, back in the hotel, I told Tansi Sanusi that Hamid Suleiman would like to visit Malaysia. And Tansi Sanusi cautioned that uh, itu mungkin susah sikit eh? as he might be arrested at the, at the airport, he told me. Eh? So I'm not sure whether he was taking it seriously or in jest. Anyhow, anyhow, statement made me worried. Imagine if he were to land at the airport and be arrested. Eh? I don't know. <laughs> so, but when I came back, when I came back, I, I was that, that, that thought in mind. I took weeks later, I happened to meet the Prime Minister, Abdullah Ahmad Badawi at a conference. So as he was coming out of the conference, the conference drink, nobody fell out After the conference, he was chit chat and you know, he said time. At that time, all, all the missiles had time for everybody. So he saw me and I hinted to him that I wanted to speak to him. So he called me and said, Let, let's just take a walk to the car. So I walked with him and said, so said, what is it? So I said, Allah, do you know Dr. Hamid Suleiman or not? He said, yeah, he, he was the director. At the IUM, you're your, your former. Huh? So I asked him, this is quite a joke. Are you going to arrest him or not? So he looked at me and said, hey, for what? I don't know, you're not going to arrest him. So I, have, I replied and I said, thank you very much. I, I expressed my appreciation to him. So I ended by saying, Allah, uh, he is coming to Malaysia soon, you know? so I hope you will be okay. Okay, me don't arrest him. Eh? So Allah looked at me and know that he said, and, said uh, and, and walk away. Eh? So it was a very brief, but meaningful nod from the Prime Minister that, okay, Hamid Salaman, please welcome him to Malaysia. So when Hamid Suleiman later on visit, visited Malaysia, I think in 2008, I arranged, uh, there was a function, and Allah was there. So the two men, and you know, Allah would embrace uh, Hamid Suleiman and say, welcome, welcome, and whatnot. So then I said, you're most welcome to IM, you're most welcome to uh, uh, Malaysia, and whatnot. So part of my, my, my job then was that we were uh, interviewing and placing them on videos, personalities, IEM personalities huh, in the video. I think Tansi Aziz, Tansi Sulaiman, and we put them on record. And I'm very happy that I asked Salim, the librarian, to interview Tansi uh, 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 Hamid Sulaiman on video. And that video, I hope, I pray, I hope that the video is still with the library. So that was in May 2008. We have deposited that in the library. So I hope it is still there. So that is the first part. I welcome him to back. I am very happy that he came back. And from there on, he came and visited Malaysia several times. And number two is the impression of campus design. Campus design. And of course, Dr. Hamid Salaman, it must attract foreign students to study in IIUM. We made sure the places will be available to them, especially for the poor but promising international students 
to receive education in Malaysia. This goes a long way to uplift the standard of international students who have come from poor families. He was able, as Sister Kamal said, to solicit funds to help them to finish their programs here. Eh? So with the qualification that they have, they will be able to get a job, not only in Malaysia, but I think most of them got jobs outside Malaysia. So this uplifted the standard of living, not only themselves, but also their family. Now he also encouraged foreign students, a foreign lecturers with qualification to come and serve IIUM, thus raising the visibility of the institution to the outside world. I think this is one of the areas around some misgivings among Malaysians that he was pro-international at the expense of Malaysian. Uh, I think on record, I think he did more uh, to have Malaysians than to have international students. But the impression was that he was more pro-international. Eh? Now, when I entered the campus, I found it impressive, beautiful layout. The masjid was at the center as a sign that it was the hub that everything else were to emanate. It was the heart and soul of IIUM. The academic core is at the center where the mahalas are situated, circling around the, uh, around the mosque. Eh? Now, Hamid, uh, Hamid Salman has a picture of the campus and buildings. I understand that Hamid Salman was very particular about the design of the building and spent hours to make sure that everything was according to his liking. The good part was that he was able to obtain the funding for the campus. And you see that uh, the, the buildings were all enriched. I think that it was to his credit. He had good connection with the minister to get the funding. So that was why we got a very, very beautiful design uh, in. Uh, for our for our campus, I want to touch on other aspects. One is the lack of lecture halls, but the presence of many seminars and classrooms. I found that this is different because I, I come from UKM, UKM and, and UM. They had more lecture halls, but we had here in in IUM more seminars or classrooms. Now, I found that Hamid Suleiman was more impressed to have small classroom than an able cordial lecturer student interaction. So KIRKS have only two lecture halls, but many classrooms. And this is good because I, I think the outcome was good. Because with the close interaction, we were able to monitor our students and we could know them by name. Whether we have big lecture halls, all the students become impersonal to you. Yeah? The other part of the equation is, is where the departmental offices and offices of the of lectures rooms are not in proximity. This is something different from, uh, from UKM, yeah? from other universities also. In other universities, you have the departmental office and you have the, the rooms of the lecturers nearby. But in IKS, we have the department, and then you find the lectures room scattered all over the places. So this is something that is different. I don't know why he planned it, or he did not plan it, but that became uh, into effect. The third one is the presence of mahala, and making it mandatory for students to stay in the hostels. And I think that is a good credit for Hamid Suleiman. Just imagine a total of 14,000 students now staying in the campus, in the Gombak campus, attending lectures, then, uh, having their dinners and lunch, eating in the cafeterias, playing games and jogging in the campus. It was to be the same in Kuantan, eh, where we had enough hostel facilities for students. I think there is one of the basic importance that we stress that students must stay 
in the campus so that we're able to know them better. And I think because of this, we have able to inculcate the, the loyalty of students to IUM. Now, now four, Hamid Salman was able to convince the authorities that the students must have a wholesome ex experience if they were to stay inside the campus. And I, I think this is another strong factor why the foreign students were expected to study in IUM because they were assured of campus residence. And uh, I, yeah. Now, because time, I, I, I promise, uh, this is about 10 minutes. The last one, this idea. Because he had so many ideas, he contributed, and I, I think I will not go. Uh, but I just want to touch on one idea which is very, very concerned. Uh, and that is the idea of Muslim unity. Now, when I first visited him in, in Riyadh, uh, he brought, towards the end, he brought this. He said, this year you are uh, a good example for Muslim unity, but I am not so happy because there is no Mus there is no Malay unity. Yeah? And Malay symbolizes them to be Muslim. So to him, that, that is something that is of, of concern. And if you read his random opus, this is his great book, The Crisis in the Muslim Mind, that, that he highlighted the need of Muslim unity. So I want to talk a bit about his concern for Muslim unity, reflected in a very concrete term, Malay unity. He was very perplexed as he saw in Malaysia a stable government run by Muslim leaders who are capable and able. And he was amazed that Muslim leaders could lead a sizable number of non-Muslims who accepted Muslim leadership. So to him, the Muslim leadership in Malaysia had invested so much money in education and training which were well priced. So Muslim unity could be an example, sorry, so Malay unity could be an example of Muslim unity in other Muslim or non-Muslim states. So there were three times he raised this issue with me. The one that I told uh, you was in Riyadh, not in great, in great depth, but establishing his deep Concern. Eh? Now, this the second time was when Professor Tahir Azhar, the deputy rector, uh, invited us to his house. I think his son. He, uh, so he was uh, seated next to me. Uh, Professor uh, Ahmed Suleiman again raised me then the current issue of, of Malay unity. He said, this unity, this, uh, this unity was not good for anybody, is it? Uh, he was carried over the rivalry between Anwar and Mahathir, and later between Anwar and Badawi. Eh? Badawi. So the last one was when we met, perhaps I think for the last time, when he lamented again at the lack of Malay unity, pointing up to the conflict among the Malay political leaders. So uh, he, he had... Uh, a lot of ideas, but I, I just like to focus on, on this great idea that he had, deep, deep concern that he had of um, Malay conflict, Malay disunity, because Malay unity to him was the concrete indicator of Muslim unity. Yeah? So the abstractness of that was the Muslim unity, but the concrete example was Malay unity. So. Uh, brothers and sisters, his death robs the ummah of an intellectual who has dedicated himself to the service of Allah. His contribution of IEM and education is tremendous. May his soul be blessed in Jannah. So, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Tansri. Uh, Datu Sri, this is really. Uh, 
great, a lot of uh, details and new things uh, about the engagement of uh, Prof. Uh, Abdel Hamid uh, in our university and the, in the bigger picture of the, as you were talking uh, in the last uh, few sentences about the uh, Malay culture, Malay unity as an indicator for the success of the Ummah. And I think this is really uh, something great and good to know uh, from you, Tansri, and you have mentioned a lot of good uh, details. Uh, let's, uh, inshallah, move forward to our uh, 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 the other speaker, our Professor uh, uh, Zaliha Kamaruddin, uh, our fifth uh, Richter. Uh, uh, Prof. Zaliha is, I think, uh, well known to all of us. Uh, she is the um, I think first uh, female Richter to lead an international Islamic university, not in Malaysia, but uh, in, the, in the world, I think. Uh, and also Professor Zaliha has worked in many other capacities before, among which we can mention uh, the Deputy Director General of the Malaysian Institute of Islamic Understanding. And I think she is now uh, well known internationally, especially in in the OIC circles, uh, uh, in, in the OIC circles. Uh, Prof. Zaliha, the floor is yours. Thank you, Prof. Aziz. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ibrahim al-Anbiya al-Muslimin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Uh, yang berbahagia Datuk Dr. Daud Bakar, Presiden of IUM, not quite sure whether he's still around. Yang berbahagia Profesor Emeritus Tan Sri uh, Zul Kifli Abdul Razak, the, the sixth rector of uh, IUM. Yang berbahagia Profesor Emeritus Tan Sri uh, Profesor Muhammad Kamal Hassan, the third rector of IUM. Profesor Datuk Sri Syed Arabi Andi, a fourth rector of IUM. And last but not least, um, our moderator tonight, uh, Prof. Dr. Abdul Aziz Berdi. Uh, I also acknowledge the presence of Sister Muna and family members of uh, Prof. Abu Sulaiman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After hearing um, all the uh, uh, six speakers, uh, I decided to do a little bit of uh, change of perspective. Number one, um, fast forward to 21st century. With new challenges and new solutions to running uh, the university, higher education. So it was uh, in 2011 when I was appointed, uh, and a year after that, uh, we went together uh, with uh, Prof. Aziz Berbuk to Riyadh uh, for a meeting of the Federation of Universities in the Islamic World in Riyadh. And uh, Prof. Aziz suggested that uh, we should uh, visit uh, Prof. Abu Sulaim. So I was so eager to meet him, uh, which I considered was um, uh, an, an opportunity uh, to invite him back to the university, uh, to see all these changes, uh, which perhaps he has foreseen or he wanted to see. Um, and uh, and uh, he hosted us. Uh, he, he has been a very good host. Uh, he hosted us at the office where uh, he introduced to his staff and all. It was at night. We went there at night. And he said we will be meeting his family the following night. And uh, from, uh, together with Dr. Ahmad Kutunji and the family as well. So it was more of family gathering. Uh, I knew him um, before that, way back in 1988, uh, when uh, there was this face-to-face uh, -face interview. He wanted to see me, and I guess he has already in his mind 
to convince me that uh, I should go and further my studies overseas. I was ambivalent, but uh, when I came in, he was like, I could see that he was quite shocked because I was so heavily pregnant at that time with my third child. And uh, my, my question, or in fact, other, um, uh, my other, I would say, friends, uh, they asked me whether who would um, prof, um, make a different uh, approach with women. I would say yes. He was a gentleman, you know, and uh, he said, uh, sister, all right, let's discuss about you going um, to further your studies overseas. So we had uh, argument on that, and he asked me what I intend to do. Well, from there, I realized that he has very specific interests on uh, family institution. And I told him I wanted to do comparative family law, and there were like a lot of discussions. So I think he wanted just five minutes. At the end of the day, it's more than that, I remember. And uh, I could see that uh, he was very kind to me, saying that when well, you unload your burden and um, when are you leaving? You know, sort of like uh, insisting that I should leave as soon as I uh, deliver my baby. And I said, well, I will inshallah think about spring, going during spring because that will be a good time uh, to go to, um, uh, to the UK. So uh, meeting him again is like uh, meeting uh, a mentor, right? Because soon after I returned in 1993, uh, I was uh, put to be in charge of the student affairs. Uh, and there was also uh, Dr. Ahmad Fadil Yusuf taking care of international students. I took care of the sisters. And, um, and uh, when the dean is not around, I'm also taking care of the dates, and I remember I had a very tough time with him. You know, they, they were times when he's quite tough, as uh, our president mentioned that uh, you know he you cannot argue with him. You you will never win uh, any argument with him. But so I decided uh, we had some arguments with Almarhum from Arif, who was in charge of the dates at that time, and uh, and uh, from Arif wanted to say two teams instead of one team. And uh, when I got advice from uh, Brother Zailan at that time that our budget was only for one team, uh, immediately I, I, I told Prof Arif at that time, one team only Prof Arif. And Prof Arif immediately went to see um, the rector at that time, you know, because the rector would be um, the decision maker whether we would send one or two. And then immediately after that, in the morning, I remember it was at 8.30 in the morning. At 10.30, I was summoned to his office. He was like, what are you doing, sister? I said, I am just following the advice of Dr. Zaila. Then he explained to me with patience the reason why we should do branding on the base. As mentioned by uh, Prof. Kama, uh, uh, we should just go beyond our Malay bubble. I would say Malay bubble now, Malay bubble. But uh, to put RIUM in the forefront in debate, to, to show to the world, not just the Muslim world, to show the, to the world that we are there. Uh, we put our sisters, we put our brothers, we are not a madrasa, you know, that kind of lecture. I was like, Ya Allah. And I remember soon after I came back from meeting him, I immediately went to Dr. Ahmad Fadil and said, Now, I, 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 I remember telling him I got an Arab smack. I said, I'm not quite sure whether I'm ready to see him again. And then uh, I realized after that, he became a little bit mellow with me, knowing that maybe uh, I am still um, um, 
but you know, still in the Malay bubble, perhaps I would say Malay bubble, you know. And uh, but then I understood his mission about this debates, uh, and um, Alhamdulillah, when uh, I met him again uh, in 2012, I told him, you know, uh, we have gone far in debates. So I'm happy to. to I told him that there were many challenges, but Alhamdulillah, we managed to overcome the challenges. And Alhamdulillah, I told him all the good news. You know, I, I'm happy that during my time, uh, there were many good news. Uh, I came in in 2011, and at that time, uh, uh, the first day I came in, I got a letter from OIC uh, saying that uh, we are already a uh, accepted as an affiliated member of OIC, uh, which means that uh, all the works that had been done by our predecessors uh, from the time of the first rector, um, um, uh, strengthened by the second rector, um, um, who was a Saudi, uh, and his relationship with uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad Ali, uh, that's uh, our actually our financial <laughs> financial relationship um, of which we gain a lot from uh, Dr. Abu Sulaiman. And um, when I say fast forward uh, to the 21st century with these new challenges, I invited him to the university, which I guess he wanted so much after hearing what I told him uh, to look. For, uh, to look uh, personally at it, when I told him, uh, Prof, uh, our new challenge now is that uh, we have 70% of our students are sisters, and more than 90% of our sisters are at Kulia of Education. And he said, oh, Wow. Uh, and now he said, I remember, he said, and now we have a female rector. Then I said, I, I can assure you, uh, Prof, uh, that uh, I will hold true to the vision of the university, which is the Islamization of knowledge. So, uh, um, uh, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, the next, I guess, the next five minutes of my speech will be uh, my reflection. Uh, tonight would be uh, from my limited perspective of Dr. Abu Sulaiman after reading um, um, uh, writings by, I would say, his close friends uh, in the uh, WhatsApp group, the International WhatsApp group uh, for condolences. So I would say that uh, my reflection tonight is from my limited perspective of Dr. Abu Sulaiman. Uh, what I would say is I was very fortunate and privileged to have been a mentee of Prof. Abu Sulaiman, uh, as I mentioned, meeting him face to face for the first time in 1988. And uh, I, I knew that uh, uh, when he started uh, calling us to go, to go abroad, um, I could see that his mission was through uh, cajoling uh, directing, uh, asking, you know, depends on <laughs> the persons whom he interviewed. And uh, when I came in, he said, um, he said, sister, um, you know, you will be uh, sort of like uh, my guinea pig for the sisters going abroad. I was like, um, you know, I, 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 I remember agreeing with him, and as uh, Dato, Dr. Dawood mentioned, he likes to challenge, and uh, I don't like to be challenged, so I took up this challenge and went. Um, and went. And um, I came back, I went to see him, and I thank him for the opportunity given to me because I came back a different person. Um, I remember that was a transitional period for IUM when uh, I guess we got the largest um, allocation for sending staff overseas. And I remember my friend, 
who was serving the uh, Ministry of Education was not very happy because uh, he doesn't like uh, the Arab style of pushing things. So I, I, I told her that uh, if we don't do this, we will not get the number. So, um, as, as you know, the rest uh, is history. Uh, uh, Prof, uh, Prof Kama was helping, uh, Prof, Prof Abu Sulaiman is doing it, uh, but Prof, Prof uh, Kama was a little bit. Uh, I would say kind, kind in, in his words and in his ways, but not uh, Dr. Abu Hamid Sulaiman. His, his, uh, he will cajole you, but uh, he will make sure that he wins every argument, and everybody knows that. Uh, and you know that he expected greatness. You could see that he demanded uh, independence and creativity, but he he appreciate, I would say he, he would appreciate critical thinking. Uh, and I guess uh, above all, he wanted uh, to see the university uh, doing all those uh, with the help of, uh, I would say his friends. And he is not doing it alone. And uh, actually I would say uh, Abu Sulaiman, was larger than life uh, in, in, uh, in terms of uh, educational reform uh, during his 10 years at IEM. Uh, being uh, magnanimous, uh, again, I said he advised and reminded us of the mission and vision of IEM. Um, the third part of my speech would be um, the last. Uh, of my speech tonight, because uh, as my own career developed, I've come to understand and appreciate the enormous influence he had in my running of the university uh, from uh, 2011 onwards until the end uh, of my term in 20, uh, early 2018 or mid 2018. Um, as you know, that we can't know a person uh, because we don't have the, I do not have the opportunity to always be with him. But for every private moments that uh, I had with him, I really um, um, uh, put it in my heart uh, because I need to really uh, read uh, his mind through his words. And I found him one of a kind, a singular dominant intellect, very dominant indeed in the transformation of education through Islamization of knowledge. You know, he has his own ways of doing it. Uh, when, um, um, uh, as I mentioned, I went to Riyadh and invited him, it's like uh, the Malay proverb, if a chair tapak tangan, niru ditadahkan, he came soon after. And uh, I'm happy uh, to say that Sister Mona was very kind enough to, uh, to accompany him uh, every time he comes to the university. And um, in, in fact, <laughs> in fact, um, I could see um, in his eyes, uh, from the time he entered the gate of the university to my office. And then he has requested Brother Shahran to take him around the campus and to places which he had been. Uh, and then when he met me, he, he would say, um, I guess you have not seen the secret tunnel. And I, I would say like, oh, what? And he said, I will take you to the secret tunnel. And he made an appointment to show me the place. And he went. At that time, he was healthy. He could go into the, uh, I would say, uh, the small jungle to show me the uh, tunnel uh, leading uh, 
from the so-called Islamic city uh, to the university. Uh, I uh, would like to invite the current rector to also see the secret tunnel as well. Uh, I, I could see that he was very happy to see the, uh, uh, how the university has grown from his humble beginnings uh, of, uh, he came in, I think he had uh, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 students. I, I, uh, I, I can't remember, perhaps Prof Aziz could uh, enlighten on this, but by the, by the time he came, uh, we had 30,000 students. And that was the maximum allowed by the Ministry of Higher Education. And uh, I, I know Prof, Sulay uh, Prof Abu Sulaiman was very intuitive uh, and, and, and um, before he leaves, uh, after every visit, he would, he would ask Brother Sharan that he would want to see me privately. And I guess Brother Sharan would be waiting outside the door for one to one and a half hours. He, because he would want to give, uh, I would say, private lessons to me, which I would share at the end of my speech. Right? So, um, um, what I could say that uh, in one of the meetings, uh, because of his intuitiveness, um, uh, he sat down, I gave him a seat uh, where I think he used to sit. Right? And he asked me to sit at that seat. I said, no, this was your seat and you will sit here for five years. Right? I'm going to do the job. You're going to give me some ideas on how to do it. I will tell you the problems. Immediately, he took it. He took a piece of paper, handwritten from his uh, safari, uh, I would say safari or bush jacket. And he told me, you know, I'm going to, you go, you go through this list and these are the people you need to contact to get to solve your problems, financial problems for the students. And uh, I remember giving that list to Prof Aziz, to Prof Aziz, right? Now, um, all I could conclude here before I, before I mention the, the lessons that I learned from this towering figure is uh, when my career uh, eventually led me back to Dr. Abu Sulaiman, I had the distinct sense that I was closer to understanding who he was and what made him inseparable from the institution. Like, although we heard about him uh, uh, marrying, married to this university, and, uh, and how he had spent the last 10 years of his life here and another several years. And I added, fortunately, another seven years to it uh, so that he could tie up loose ends, things he could not do when he left in a hurry in 1998. So I had the sense that maybe he approved uh, and I am comforted by the fact that he is satisfied that I kept true to the vision of uh, IIM. And I was mentioned today by um, uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Dr. Sanokutu uh, in his uh, it is was up to me that um, uh, that he was satisfied that uh, the last visit in 2016, which he considered was uh, his last visit uh, to IUM, that uh, I had fulfilled uh, his uh, main agenda. I would say main agenda. There are many other agendas but the main agenda has been fulfilled. Um, I am talking about uh, actually uh, the process that I've gone through. Uh, although I said that he is a gentleman, but the 
tutoring that I got from him uh, as a tutor, as a mentor, I'm talking about the iron sharpening type of mentoring. It's not easy, but uh, uh, because it's up close and personal. And um, I would say it's honest work uh, by Dr. Abu Hamid Sulaiman. And, um, and uh, I would say that he has been painlessly, painlessly honest with me. Okay, last but not least, he left me with so many lessons, but I want to share with you a few of those uh, with you tonight. Uh, uh, number one, life lessons, number one. I have only three, don't worry. Number one, listen with your eyes. Because he knows through his experience that um, uh, people have promised him so many things. And he told me that if I listen with my eyes, I will just zero down to people who can contribute. Number two, life lessons. Number two is treat students kindly. He didn't mention staff. He said students kindly. He taught me to see through the person now, i.e. the students, to the person they could be. Right, so um, I brought in Prof. Mizan to ensure that he treated the students well as leaders of the Ummah. And life lesson three, which is, Ya Allah, so difficult to, to do, was to take risk. I was not a risk taker. But he persuaded me to take the risk. And I knew when I read the history of him running the university that he took many risks and also being misunderstood by so many people, by so many people, I wouldn't say. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I guess uh, that's it from me. Um, I hope uh, we will do something concrete on this, perhaps uh, I would like to propose, besides uh, the Kuhiya being, being named after him, uh, would uh, to study his works uh, so that the younger generation would uh, benefit uh, from this towering figure and we could uh, we could uh, enhance uh, his work on uh, Islamization of knowledge and the transformation of the Ummah through education. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sri Zaliha, for uh, your very informative and insightful uh, uh, points and aspects. Uh, mashallah, you have covered a lot of uh, important details and uh, uh, showing the greatness uh, of, of uh, Prof. Abdul Hamid and his way of uh, managing things and leading the university and building the people in action while 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 in 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 in, in movement. So I think. Uh, this is really great. In fact, I, I, I really, uh, it's, it's just a matter of time. Otherwise, we will, uh, I will, I will never stop any one of these uh, four uh, great directors and the president to speak uh, and, and, and give us all this wealth of uh, aspects and ideas about this great uh, personality and great leader. Uh, all what you have said will become part and parcel of the uh, institutional memory and history of IIUM and people 20, 30 years from now, they will listen to this and they will see uh, how, how this uh, man has uh, uh, made his contributions to us. Uh, before we, uh, uh, in fact, we exceeded uh, our time, but uh, I would like to, uh, before I ask Sister 
Sister Muna to uh, request Sister Muna to say a few words. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Professor Dr. Abdurashid Martin, one of our senior professors uh, in IIUM, who was with us uh, for uh, a long time, and he uh, is familiar uh, with Prof. Abdul Hamid, and he knew Abdul Hamid for a long, long time. To say a few words, uh, Prof. Uh, Martin, please go ahead. Uh, maybe three to five minutes, you may summarize any of the uh, ideas that you would like to say. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Mr. President, directors, past directors, Muna and others, uh, I would like to thank the moderator, Prof. Abdulaziz Barghut, to give me the opportunity to talk about. Uh, Allah Yarham Ahlul Jannah, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Uh, I would say very confidently and that I was very closer, very close to uh, Allah Yarham. Uh, I was introduced to him by Prof. Kamal. Prof. Kamal told me after I joined four or five days later, he said, please go and see the director because he does not know you. So I went and I saw, and after I saw him, uh, then we became closer. And 15 days later, I became the head of department. And then I became a special, very, very special to him uh, for the simple reason that uh, in his book, uh, The Crisis of the Muslim Mind, he mentioned that Islamization of knowledge in the university, there are only two departments which are very, very essential uh, for promoting Islamization of knowledge. One is political science and the other one is education. So he took these two departments very seriously. And uh, I thought I was very lucky and very happy also, but then I didn't realize that I was, I'm, I'm going to land into trouble. Uh, one day I was coming back from um, Duma prayer, and at the, he was at my back, and then suddenly he said, Ya Mashaikh, he used to call me Mashaikh. Ya Mashaikh, I said, Oh, Brother Rector, what is it? He said, Did I tell you? I said, What? Did I tell you that I'm not happy with your department? I said, uh, No, you didn't tell me, but I'm telling you that I'm not happy with my department. But Brother Rector, what is it that you are unhappy about? He said, where is your syllabus? I said, no, we don't have a syllabus. In those days, there were, there were no syllabus. Lecturers would go to the classroom and teach whatever they would like to. And uh, then he said, what have you done? I said, I have appointed a committee. I have appointed a committee of five, five of my staff members, and they are preparing something. I have prepared my own, but I will wait for them to come up. So he said, oh, you have prepared something? I said, yeah, I will wait for them. He said, uh, that was on Friday. And he said, can you come and see me on Sunday morning at eight o'clock in my office? I said, uh, is it possible uh, a whole rector would come to the office at eight o'clock to see me? I said, sure, brother rector, no problem. I came at eight o'clock. He was there at seven o'clock. And then whole day we sat down, he went through my uh, draft of the syllabus and he went through one by one, page by page, letter by letter, word by word. And then he made changes. And before the Maghrib prayer, we finished the whole syllabus. And it is the same syllabus, which is still running in the department with few additions of two. So if you look at the political science syllabus, it is the handmade of, uh, Professor Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. He is the one who made it. So I wouldn't take much time. I was just telling you this thing just to tell you that he was very, very uh, attentive to details. He goes into the details bit by, uh, bit by bit and would come up with something solid. So this is what he did it. And of course, all along, he has been very kind to all of us. And uh, and uh, I'm grateful and I'm, I, I appreciate Chancellor Rizul Kifli for announcing the, the, the Kulia of Islamic Revealed Knowledge 
uh, by his name. Uh, as a matter of fact, Muna and me, uh, when when they came last time, Muna was telling me, why not we make the Kulia uh, under his name? I said, why not we make the university under his name? Because the university is his creation. We should call it <laughs> Ahmad Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman International Islamic University, Malaysia. But he said, no, 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 why not we just make this Kulia? I said, okay. Uh, that's a good idea. And today uh, it rea we realized that dream and uh, we we thank him and we, we appreciate and we pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to uh, make these things true, to, to, to make the university come up to his expectations. Inshallah. Inshallah. We will come up to his expectations and we will do whatever is necessary to achieve his dream. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him Jannah. He is Ahlul Jannah, inshallah. And we all pray that we should follow him in his Thank you very much, Prof. Rashid, uh, for your uh, words of wisdom. Can I uh, uh, call uh, sister, request uh, Sister Muna uh, to say um, a few words uh, uh, in the end of our program here? Uh, sister Muna, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. I wanted to uh, thank you so much for uh, this beautiful tribute. I hope that my internet is okay. I'm not sure because I'm having some internet trouble. It's okay. It's okay. We hear you well. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for this amazing gesture, Tansuri uh, Zul, uh, of naming my dad's, um, I guess, grandchild, we have called it, uh, the Kudliya of Revealed Knowledge, which he saw as the essence of change for the Islamic Ummah or the knowledge inside of it. I also wanted to thank all the rectors who came today and took time to remember a colleague, a friend, a mentor, a teacher, and somebody who cared as much as they did for the Ummah. I want to especially thank Dr. Zuleika because she will never know how much it meant to my dad to be able to come back and, as you said, tie a lot of loose ends. The type of um, welcome that he got from you and from Professor Kamal Hassan and also from so many professors and teachers and students as I accompanied him has meant a lot. Um, and my father is not a very expressive person, but he always said that seeing that university blossom was a hope for the Ummah. I also want to thank in particular, Dr. Abdul Aziz Barahout, who has been a great friend and almost his academic son, I would say, um, for many years. I remember my dad when he um, wrote the last book, Azmatul Aql Wal Wajdan. And I asked him, and I don't read a lot of my father's books because somebody said he has very high frequency. And I um, asked him, what is about this uh, book that was amazing? And he said, it was 60 years of work, trial and error all over the world. I would try something, I think it would say, Answering one question, Nahdatul Ummah, the resurrection of the Islamic civilization. And I would try one thing and I would try another and I would learn and I would, and so this was Hulasat, the summary of it. And of course, his trial and error was with Rufaqa al Darb, Dr. Jamal Barazanji, Dr. Ahmed Tutunji, Dr. Yaqub Mirza, Dr. Taha Jabir Alwani, Dr. Dr. Um, uh, Hisham al-Talib, uh, Dr. Anas uh, Sheikh Ali, and a lot of friends from IIIT and from the university. And of course, with my mother, the amazing Madame Faika Malaika, who never said no to another move, to another place that he will take her, to another far-flung conference in a city that she doesn't speak any languages of, on this trip to help serve Allah in resurrecting his, uh, or in tajdeed his uh, risalatu. I wanted to also uh, talk about one little thing. The universe, they say that in Africa, there's always one storyteller in the tribe 
who will take the stories of everybody and make sure that he passes it on to the next generation. He will take the knowledge and passes it on to the next generation. Generation, And when that person dies, they say it's a great library that died. And when my father passed away with his love, his belief in Islam, the stories and of the trials and errors of all the educational reform from around the world, his belief that institutions matter, but also expertise matter. It is what is inside the institution the human being, al insan, that is being built. And also the ability to have a manhaj that people can go back to, the references. So all these things that he brought with him, they didn't die when he passed away because there is IIUM. The International Islamic University is that library that will live on, that will always keep on producing the next scholars and the businessmen and the government policy makers who will seed the idea of Islam's greatness, the idea that Islam is the answer all over the world. Everyone on this Zoom from IIU, from his students, from IIIT, from the people that has listened to his lectures and are just tuning in, shares the same thing, this passion for Islam, this belief in Islam. And their journeys might be different. They came from different places, just like the early Muslims coming from all over, believing Islam is under a lot of adversary right now, challenges from modernism, from secularism, from people even within the religion who see it in different ways and the need for this intellectual rigorous process to continue to have students who will go and help create Islamization of knowledge in all the disciplines that Islam is a way of life is as needed now as it is as it was 1500 years ago. Alhamdulillah that Baba's library and the library of the people who created it and the vision that came before him and that he tweaked and that each rector is tweaking. I love this idea of environment, the bi'a, because al-isanu khalifa fil ard, an environment is so important. So everybody tweaking in their own way, but everybody progressing straight into a direction. It has been an honor to be asked to speak on behalf of the family today on behalf of my mother, who loved Malaysia and loved the university, who also has deep beliefs in Islam for all the sacrifices that were made by my parents, by the friends from IIIT, by the people who are listening in, by the rectors, because the burden is huge, but the reward is also huge. Allah is there and my dad passed away and he was buried yesterday. And we know that he's talking to God about the university. Allah thank you so much for allowing me to have these few moments to remember him and to learn and to hear about the news of naming that kulliya under him. Because as he said, as Dr. Zuleikha said, ashuf bi'aini. I see with my eyes, I hear, I'm sorry, Asma bi'aini. I hear with my eyes. And today he heard with his eyes from under the ground and from over us in the sky, listening in, how much he mattered to all of you. And I also want to thank everybody from Triple IT, Ammu Yaqub, Ammu Ahmed, Ammu Allah Yerhamhum, Ammu Jamal Allah Yerhamhum. Amu Hisham, Allah Khali, for continuing the work, for doing the work before. Nahnu ala khutakum, insha'Allah, kulli insan billadhi yaqdaru alayh. Wa niya hiya aham shay. And to my mother who's listening as well today. You did an amazing job with Baba when he needed you the most. 
the past few years have been extremely difficult. And we appreciate you as we appreciate my father, Datu, Dr. Professor, Sheikh Abdul Hamid Abu Suleiman. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sister uh, Mona, for uh, your kind uh, words. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, everybody, those who are with us here in the Zoom, and the over 150 people are also uh, following in our official uh, YouTube. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we uh, have listened to our president, our rectors, the Mantan and the Baru Richter and uh, Alhamdulillah we have learned a lot of things about um, Prof. Abdul Hamid and uh, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, things if I would like just to before I ask Professor Akmal our beloved brother Professor Akmal Kuzairi to uh, bless this uh, gathering with a dua I would like just to summarize uh, or to underscore very important points that has been uh, mentioned here very briefly. I think, uh, uh, as I understood, and I know Prof. Abdul Hamid, I think IIUM is in him, is inside his soul and heart. If I tell you, I was doing a kind of research in the last, last two to three years following uh, some of his interviews and uh, um, uh, recent writings, I, I didn't find a time where he give an interview or who he speak to people in universities or conferences and there is no reference to IIUM. And he considers IIUM as his uh, as his successful or the successful model of the ummah uh, introducing this new value-based integrated education. There is no time I, I uh, listened to his videos or uh, read uh, the articles. So to him, I noticed that Professor Abdul Hamid towards uh, the end of his life, the last five to 10 years, uh, start uh, enhancing more, prioritizing more the after the intellectual, the crisis in the Muslim mind, after the methodology, after the Islah, he came to Tarbiyah, to education, and in Tarbiyah talks about spirituality, about akhlaq, about values, about the importance of the human uh, himself. And I think that's the direction of our university now so that we uh, move forward uh, in this integrated model of tarbia that uh, that that uh, integrates all these aspects the last thing to mention a few years ago i think three years uh, two and a half years ago i spoke to uh, prof abdul hamid and to sister muna regarding the uh, student and immediately, without any uh, hesitation, he uh, decided to uh, establish the International Student Fund. Started then in 2018 with 1 million. Now we have 2 million. And uh, soon there will be 3 million in this fund. We helped already around 200 students and in the plans this year to help another 100 student. All this in the mizan of his hasanat, all this uh, in, in, in inshallah will be paying for him and for the university and for the ummah. As Tansri, I did mention, he has a great hope in IIUM, in the Malay elite and scholars and in Malaysia to be uh, to be uh, the people who will lead the revival, inshallah, of our ummah. Uh, there are many things to mention, but I stop at this point and I ask Professor, our brother, Professor Akmal Kuzairi, to bless this uh, gathering with the dua. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده 
يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك فلك الحمد قبل الرضا فلك الحمد بعد الرضا ولك الحمد إذا رضيت وفنينا دائما سرمدا إلى يوم الدين اللهم زد في شرف نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وآته الوسيلة والفضيلة والشرف والدرجة العالية الرفيعة وبعثه المقام المحمود الذي وعدته إنك لا تخرف الميعاد واسقنا بيده الشريفة شربة هنيئة مريئة لا نضبع بعدها أبدا يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لمعلمنا والشيخنا ومديرنا السابق المرحوم الأستاذ الدكتور عبد الحميد أبي سليمان اللهم ارحمه وعافه واعف عنه وأكرم نزله ووسع مدخله واغسله بالماء والثلج والبرد ونقه من الخطايا كما نقيت الثوب الأبيض من الدنس اللهم أبدله دارا خيرا من داره وأهلا خيرا من أهله وزوجا خيرا من زوجه وأدخله الجنة وأعذه من عذاب القبر وعذاب النار Oh Allah, forgive and have mercy upon our teacher, Sheikh, and second rector of our university, Al-Marhum Prof. Emeritus Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman. Oh Allah, pardon him reception, expand his entry and cleanse him with water, snow, and ice, and purify him of sin as a white robe is purified of filth. Exchange his home for a better home, and his family for a better family, and his spouse for a better spouse. Admit him into the garden, protect him from the punishment of the grave and the torment of the fire. Allah man qulhum min diq al lahud wal qubur ila jannat ka jannat al khulud wa sidr maqdud wa talh mandud wa zil mandud wa ma maskub. وفاكهة كثيرة لا مقطوعة ولا ممنوعة مع الذين أنعمت عليهم من النبيين والشهداء والصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Oh Allah, remove him from the narrowness of the graves to the vastness of your eternal paradises showered with your abundant blessings and gifts which are forever continuous and never ending Place him with those whom you have blessed from among the prophets, Matthias, and your obedient servants, O Lord, the most merciful. Allahumma yassir alayhi amrahu, wa sahil alayhi ma ba'dahu, wa as'idhu bi liqa'ik, wa j'al mimma kharaja ilayhi khayran mimma kharaja an. O Allah, is upon him matters, and make light for him whatever comes hereafter. And honor him with your meeting and make that which he has gone to better than that which he come out from. Rabbana gfir lana wa li ikhwanina alladhina sabakuna bil iman wa la taj'al fi qulubina ghillan lilladhina amanu. Rabbana innaka ra'ufur rahim. O our Lord, forgive us and our brothers who preceded us in faith. And do not put in our hearts any rancor towards those who believed. O oh Lord, indeed, you are full of kindness, most merciful. Allahumma la tada'a lana fi maqamina hadha dhamban illa ghafartah, wa la hamman illa farrajtah, wa la daynan illa qadaytahu, wa la maridan illa shafaytahu, wa la aduan illa kafaytahu, wa la ghaiban illa radattahu, ولا عاصيا إلا عصمته ولا فاسدا إلا أصلحته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا عيبا إلا سترته ولا عسيرا إلا يسرته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة لك فيها رضا ولنا فيها صلاح إلا عنتنا على قضائها في يسر منك يا أرحم الراحمين أو الله Live not for us a sin which you have not forgiven, nor a shortcoming which you have not concealed, nor a worry which you have not removed, nor a debt which you have not paid, nor a need from among the needs of this world and the hereafter, the fulfillment of which is beneficial for us and pleasing to you, which you have not fulfilled. O most merciful of all, 
show us your mercy. Rabbana taqabbal minna du'a'ana innaka anta samiul alim wa tub alayka wa tub alayna innaka anta tawwabur rahim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Akmal, for this uh, great dua. MashaAllah. In the end of our uh, program, I would like to uh, thank everyone, especially our president and our rector, our former rectors, all the participants uh, who, are, who are with us here, uh, whether in the Zoom and YouTube. I think this uh, video will be spread uh, elsewhere in the world. I think the Amana now is in our hand. And and inshallah, from here, uh, we move forward, uh, inshallah, in advancing the cause of the uh, university, the nation, and the ummah uh, to, to, to help the world, uh, inshallah. Uh, uh, I think I stop at this uh, point. May Allah bless you all. Maybe, uh, Brother Faris, we wanted to have like a photo, uh, uh, photo um, session or a photo to, to, to uh, keep the, uh, the memory, inshallah. Can you please manage this uh, uh, collective uh, photo of the team? Yeah, please turn on your video. Yeah, you can Thank you, please. Did you please cover that? Yes, I. No. Yes. I think the speed, the image you on it. I cannot on my by myself. All right. One minute. One minute. Uh, Okay, thank you everyone. Alhamdulillah.